let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. More reverence for the head. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Second lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. Therefore let no man glory in man, in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Quote, Brethren, you should revise the above portions, and let them be lessons for thought for everyone, so that you will really know why you are being called into this kingdom. In general, we, in general, if we were to know ourselves, we would not have been boastful of ourselves, of some other person's or money or our money. Rather, all your boastfulness should have been in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God says thus: What have you that you receive not from God? And if you received it from God, why do you boast of it? Our golden text and even the first lesson have made it quite clear to us that no man should glory in men. For all things, whether the people, the world, life, tribulation, and every other thing belong to us. But we belong to Christ, while Christ belongs to God. Therefore, if we and the entire world were to have come to this consciousness, we would have known that these statements have, guarantee, have guaranteed everything for us. Whatever we may notice by our sides or within us are highly owned by Christ. That is why no one is supposed to boast of anything for life, death, good health, ill health, money, tribulation, and everything in dispens in dispens indisputably belongs to you, while you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Among all the things that we may find favorable in our lives, Christ's love is the most beneficial to us. Therefore, it is not expedient that we should toy with him, because in his absence we would not have been rejoicing as we are now doing. He is the rightful head of all men and God is the head of all things in heaven and on earth. Hence, we are not expected to exalt ourselves concerning anything whatsoever. Whether you have fleets of vehicles, money in abundance, no matter how rich you may think you are, all those riches belong to us while we belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. So brethren, let us endeavor to know ourselves, for it is already said, Man, know thyself, and thou shalt know all things. If we should know ourselves, we would have been able to know, and so be careful about all our deeds and thoughts, and we would therefore not be at all boastful. If you are not opportuned to read the Bible, 
carefully, you will not know exactly what man is and at the same time what you are expected to do. What is the difference between man and a woman? And what is the difference between God and Christ? I do not intend to be tedious unto you. Let our first lesson be read again. First lesson, First Corinthians chapter First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Brethren, the three personalities mentioned in the text constitute the entity. Ideally, all things belong to us. We belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Essentially, our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us real love. He has demonstrated for us what is expected of us to do, pointed out to us what God has done and what he has come to do among us. He has also taught us how to be benevolent, merciful, humble, truthful and of good behavior. It is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that art heard and art learned of the Father cometh unto me. That was in John chapter 6 verse 45. Take note of this. The implied lesson you have so far received is that if you should beat any person you are invariably beating yourself. If you should kill anybody you would be killing yourself. If you steal you have stolen your own property and whatever sin you have committed in summarily done unto Christ. So it is of no value for anyone to exalt himself, to boast or do whatsoever he independently thinks is very wise. So each and every one of us should remain wherever we are being kept and as well emulate our Lord Jesus Christ for he is the mother for every one of us. This explains why he had assured us that he will never leave us comfortless but that he would come back unto us. So <clears throat> none of us should in any way boast of ourselves rather we all should boast of Christ and Christ should boast of the Father. In conclusion, therefore, let, let's listen to the Spirit and also try to, Im, to abide in the Spirit. Do not see yourself as being better than another. Always see yourself as somebody who would not have survived without Christ. Let our second lesson be read again. Second lesson. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for our sakes he become poor that through his poverty we might be rich. Christ is the source of human life brethren even though you all may be without wisdom, this lesson is explicitly revealed unto you that in the absence of our Lord Jesus Christ, you should not have existed. You would not have existed. We walk about, we live, we feed, and do all what we find around us. But the generating force comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. All our joy, our speech, and rewards in addition all come from him because he is the functional head whosoever rejects him therefore has ignorantly rejected life he rejected god he rejected the world and all things therein again the three personalities mentioned here are just one in essence 
man cannot comfortably exist without a woman and vice versa. Christ himself cannot exist without God and vice versa. Indisputably, Christ is the head of man while God is the head of Christ. Hence, he generally heads everything. That is why it has been made clear to us that we came on into this world with nothing and so we will go back also with nothing. In this way, we need not boast of being something for all our ideas come from Christ. It is essential therefore that we start right from this moment to live a life that is worthy of the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. For our sakes, Christ surrendered all what he had and in the same vein, we have to reciprocate by surrendering ourselves unto him so that we may be open-handedly surrendered unto God who is indeed whatsoever we are in life. So he rightly owns us completely up to our intestines, our blood, bones, veins, arteries. In fact, he owns everything in us. He too is all things and all things are in him. Let our golden text be read again. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God. This is the greatest love ever expressed. Brethren, have you no seen the reason in the statement that says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That was in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. This is an indication that we are all with the Father already and so there is no one that can exist outside our Lord Jesus Christ. Ignorance is sinfulness. In addition, none of us could have had anything outside our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let none of us struggle and fight or quarrel for anything because all things are ours since we belong to our Lord Jesus Christ as he too belong to God. This is confirmed in what is written in John chapter 15 verses 5 to 6. Thus it says, I am divine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. Brethren, can you now see where the problem of the world comes from? A lot of the people erroneously engage themselves in boasting about the things they own and the positions they have been able to acquire, forgetting that our Lord Jesus Christ is the owner of all things, including themselves. Since this has been made distinctly known to us, our duty now is to revere and love him, be humble to him, obey all his instructions as our own head, much as he does to God who also is his own head. It is often said, Our Lord Jesus Christ is our life. 
Truly, He is my life. He is the words that we speak, the clothes that we wear, the beginning and the end, and the core of everything. Minus Christ, nothing will exist. If you foolishly deny Him, you have unfortunately denied life, good health, and you are therefore good for nothing. But if you duly accept Him, you have comfortably acquired life, good health, love and finally all your problems difficulties would have would go under your feet we are constantly thrown into lots of difficulties because we do not reverence our lord jesus christ and for the fact that we do not know him we are then not capable of knowing the right things that we should have done. This ignorance consequently forces us into disobeying his useful instruction and right from the night that Christ has been vividly exposed to us even with the tiny detail we have we should then realize that he owned us and that everything that we own is his when we do this we will all be free from all our problems and difficulties have you now seen the meaning of the words which he spoke in john 14 verse 6 thus jesus said unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me apart from christ where can you pass through to go and see God. The problem in our midst is that he knows all of us quite well, but we do not know him a bit. He is jealous of us and so wants us exclusively for himself, but we do not want him at all. We do not even want to accept the fact that we are one with him. But he kindly agreed that we are one with him, that he is in us and that we are in him. From now henceforth, let us honor and abide in Christ because there is no impossibility with him. There, that is why it has been clarified for you that a woman cannot do anything by herself no matter how much money she has, how exalted and how knowledgeable or how wealthy a woman may be, she must humbly be under a man. There is no woman that can sincerely proclaim being capable of existing on her own. That is the reason from time immemorial women were not counted during census even if there are only 300 men among 1 million women the final result would be 300 people and that's all not not that the women were not recognized as human beings but the fact that the fact is that every woman is supposed to be under a man Naturally, that is how God has fashioned his thing in the proper order. Hence, nobody can change the fact that a woman is under a man, a man is under Christ, and Christ is under God. That is why man is called the church and the flesh in the whole world should gather. If the whole world should gather together now, they cannot do anything because they are only the church. And who is the head of the church? The head controls the body with all our belongings as well as that big hat on our head. You are of no meaning because you are the body of Christ while he is the head. So no matter how numerous we here may be we cannot do anything except with christ or for 
he is always the head with the same reason no matter how numerous the woman may be even if there should be as numerous as the sand in the seashore they are only meaningful when when under the men even if a woman should decide to change the color of her eyes or nose or face or perm her hair extraordinarily and dress herself in whatever manner she thinks good she cannot do anything tangible independently women have to seek the men men must also seek our lord jesus christ because without him you cannot do anything if men should sufficiently recognize christ as their own head then we would be really free similarly if women should also submit and recognize the men as their head things would work well everywhere god is truly the head of all of us therefore adhere to his injunction and also honor him in this way all our problems would be taken care of god honor stands if a child who is inside the womb is identified as a male all the women must honor him for he is the head there the man should correspondingly honor christ and if all of us should willingly recognize god we would honor him and also abide by all his instructions so as to glorify his name beloved brethren a stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise i do not intend to be tedious unto you he who has ears to hear let him hear may god bless his holy words amen end of quote peace in the name of lord jesus christ amen thank you father